All right. Oh, oh yep. yep. I can hear it out. from your computer. All right. <laughs> Thank you for your patience. Okay, we have our tech guy here with us, Paul. That's really helpful. Um, again, I'm Sarah Giffen Hunter, and I'm Jacqueline Wilkie. And we are both assistive technology specialists at the Simon Technology Center, which is a program at Pacer Center in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Now they can read it. Um, so we're presenting a Zoom webinar. And um, Paul is here to do any of the tech support. So he's going to be putting links to our two handouts in, um, in the chat. And this slide shows you how to access the chat if you haven't done that before. At the very end of the workshop, there will be a link to do the evaluation. It's also a great idea if you're having any technical problems or just any kind of questions to put those in the chat and Paul can help you with those. If there are any questions that we need to address then he'll share those with us and we can do that. Um, we encourage questions throughout the presentation just because as we're showing a specific um, items, it's kind of easier to go in, in more depth than if you have questions about them. And then we can also do general questions at the end. And a certificate of attendance is available. If you are a teacher or professional that needs that, it will be available at the end. You do need to submit the workshop evaluation. And then there is a link where you can download that certificate. Okay, so we are from the Simon Technology Center at Pacer Center, one of many programs offered in departments. And we have a variety of different services available for um, children and adults with disabilities. We serve all ages. Uh, we, we, have, we do information and referral. So if you have a question, just shoot us an email and we can get back to you with a question or with an answer. Uh, we also have a lending library with over 1,700 items that people can borrow, um, try out, see, see if it works. And we also do technology consultations where we come up with a, a list of tools um, for people to try in many different areas, communication, reading, writing, math, um, even video games. And yeah, so we come up with a list and share it and do demonstrations. And we also do individualized trainings. If you'd like information and training on a specific tool, we can tailor that to you. And we also do uh, workshops and classes. Some are virtual and some are in person or hybrid. And yeah, that's, that's what we do at PACER. Yeah, so today's agenda, we'll start out with an intro to assistive technology and what it is. And then we'll go over some categories of assistive technology with examples that we'll show you. Um, and then we'll do an overview of the STC, their services and programs, a little more information than what I just said. And then we'll have time for questions and uh, the evaluation. And we'll have two handouts, um, which Paul will, I, maybe he's already put them in the chat, but if you're arriving a little late, he will plop them in again. So one is the uh, handout of these slides. Then the other one is a list of technology resources, um, the things that we show. And that'll have prices and links if you'd like to purchase them or do more research. We're going to talk about a lot of different tools, but the ones that we're specifically demoing, we did put together in a, in a handout. You want to tell what the QR codes are? Oh, yeah. And these QR codes, um, you can scan them with your phone, and that'll bring you to the handouts. Or um, you can click on the links if you've already downloaded the hand, this handout. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. So, starting with um, basically an, a definition of assistive technology, um, it is anything that can help you do something that you couldn't do or do as efficiently or independently without. So very, very broad. You'll, you'll see in today's presentation um, the kind of breadth of things that, that we do um, consider assistive technology. Um, and it is under IDA, the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act. And schools are required to consider AT for each student who receives special education services. 
and any member of the team can provide input in this conversation. So actually at PACER, a big part of our program is parent advocates. And a big part of what they do is work with parents and help them um, learn about and advocate for accommodations that their students need. And um, that's one of the ways that we work together is that we can um, help the parents and the advocates both learn about different kinds of technology. And then that parent is a very important person on that team to help advocate for the technology that will support their student in school or in community living or um, employment. Um, so this is just broken down a little bit more. Um, definition with some, starting with some pictures here, it gives a variety. So actually any item um, can also be, um, can just be purchased, but it can also be modified. So if you hear like switch adapted, that might mean that someone has actually gone into the electronics of it and adapted it so that a switch will work with it. We'll show you what that looks like in a little bit here. And it can, it, it doesn't just have to be like an absolutely required thing. Like it's not like a wheelchair for someone who can't walk. So it can also just increase or improve their capabilities. So a student with dyslexia that has a tool that helps them to read is supporting, you know, this important um, activity that they need to do to, to thrive. And another important, um, point is that assistive technology also includes services. So this is a good example of what you see on the screen right here. On, on the left is an alternative communication device, and it's actually kind of complex. So we don't ever think that you would just hand someone this device and that it will be, you know, helping them do what they're needing to do. So the whole, the training of it, the services that support learning how to use it, answering questions is also a really important part of that, of assistive technology. And an important part of what we do, an important part of what a lot of people do, teachers and speech language pathologists and all that. So anything that we show you or any software that someone might be using, um, supporting them through learning how to use it is very key. So you've probably heard about, you know, someone's handed an iPad and they don't know what to do with it then it's not helping them in any sort of way until they learn what, in what ways it will help them. So the SET, S-E-T-T framework is a, a framework that was created by Joy Zabawa. And it is really focused on um, the decision-making process of what uh, technology will, will work and be supportive for the individual. And so it starts with the student. That's the focus that it starts with a student. So it's not, it's not the right process for a school to say, well, we have this iPad, so we're going to give it to that student. It will help support them. Um, so the, the process for um, figuring out the AT that will help starts with a student. And then we look at what environment they're in. So let's say they're in the classroom. And then we look at what tasks they're trying to do that maybe they're struggling with. And then we start to evaluate which tools might help with that student in that environment doing those tasks. So there's a link on there if you're interested in learning more about that. Um, this is a big, Joy Zabala is very well known in the AT world and um, created this really effective um, tool to do that discernment. So yeah, assistive technology, it is definitely a continuum. Uh, it has low tech, mid tech, and high tech, and one isn't better than the other. They all serve a great purpose. Uh, low tech AT tools are things like magnifiers or pencil grips. Uh, they're not electronic. They're pretty simple. A lot of those can be um, made DIY, anything from like building up book pages with foam, uh, using PVC pipes to display um, symbols. Uh, but yeah, very effective for a lot of people. And then uh, mid-tech uh, devices have some simple electronics in them. So like a recordable communication device or a switch or um, switch toys. Uh, again, they work for a lot of people, not overly complex. Uh, and then high tech, you're getting into like communication devices, iPads, uh, 
yeah, tablets, computers, uh, things that have advanced technology and take, yes, a lot of learning and effort, but um, they work well. Let's say a smartphone is a high a smartphone tech. is a high, high tech. tech yes, yeah. definitely. And of course, as you might imagine, as you go higher tech, it's probably going to become more expensive. Yes. <laughs> yeah, and high tech does not always mean better tech. Mid and low work well too. So these are some categories um, we've come up with. It's not totally comprehensive, but this is what we'll be focusing on for this workshop. Um, mobility and positioning, recreation, commun communication, AAC, alternative access, alternative keyboards and mice, reading, writing, math, daily living aids, vision and hearing, health and wellness, sensory aids, and environmental controls are what we'll, we'll be focusing on. Okay, so mobility, mobility and positioning isn't something we do a lot of at PACER um, because it's so individualized to each person. So it's more like hospitals and medical facilities do this type of a thing. Um, yeah, anything from like a wheelchair to a, a gate trainer that helps someone walk with support. And yeah, a walker, standers, position, positioning aids, um, different adaptive seating. Um, a lot of it can be purchased commercially or especially adapted to the person by a medical professional. And record, yeah, we, we don't have anything to show for that, but we thought we'd go on an overview. Now here's, here's where the fun part happens. <laughs> we'll demonstrate some of these tools. Oh, oh you want to just talk about it first? Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, recreation um, comes in a lot of different forms. Anything from as simple as like a built up paintbrush or writing utensil for drawing or painting. Uh, anything that helps play games, uh, adapted bicycles are a good form of recreation. Uh, we have we have a lot of these options in our lending library. There, there's an adapted video game controller where any any um, button on a controller can be, uh, you can use a switch instead. So you can use your head, your arms, your legs. And, uh, oh, yeah. So should, we, should we go full screen for this? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, now, now I'll show you some of our options. Oh, there it is, frozen. Oh, hmm, weird, sorry, our camera seems to be frozen. you talk about it in that, that camera and let him fix it. Oh, yep. Okay. Well, sorry it's little, but uh, one of the things I'm showing is called an alternate spinner. And it's A-L-L-T-U-R-N-I-T. And it has a button that you can press to spin. Or you can hook up an external switch. It has a port for that. It comes with an overlay of, of uh, dice. But um, online, I was able to print out colors. So you could use it for Candyland or any kind of um, color learning or art. Lots of options. Hold off, not track. OK. <laughs> Trying to fix their document camera. There we go. Oh, OK. Uh -huh. I mean, oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, OK. Oh, it's OK. Now. <laughs> yes, there's the spinner, a bit bigger. So that's a fun tool. We also have, here, yeah, thanks, Sarah. This tool is a switch adapted dice roller. So you can, it comes off, you can change, switch out the dice. Um, and it even, it works with nine sided, like um, role playing different, different shapes and sizes of dice. So I'll show you how this works. Oh, three of a kind, not bad. That's uh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, so, um, yeah, and it, you can, you have to hold the switch down and then when you release it, it stops. So that's fun for lots of different games, Yahtzee and I don't know any other dice games off the top of my head. But yeah, that is 
switch it out to dice roller. So then our next category is communication or AAC, alternative and augmentative communication. And it, again, the low tech end, just picture symbols, like making a choice between two or three items. That's kind of where it starts. And then there are single message devices where you press it, you record it, you press it, it says one thing. And then mid tech devices have multiple options, like the, up, the upper right hand corner is one that I'll show. Um, those are recordable, but they have different like levels. So you can do, you can have like eight different sheets that you put in with different things to say. Um, and then the high tech are uh, voice output communication devices and apps. So the designated devices, um, you, like insurance will cover a designated device like a Dynavox or a Accent 1000 or um, NovaChat. And um, those are yeah, very, they're, they're durably built. They're meant to withstand use. Um, there are also apps you can get with the same programs on an iPad, which insurance usually won't cover, but it is more affordable if, if that's not an option. Um, so yeah, now I'll, I will show you some of our devices. There, cool. So the, these are talking bricks. Um, yeah. ah, turn it on. There are three, it comes with three and they can be disconnected or put together to form a sentence. And you, yeah, you just record them. More. And it talks. And it has covers that come off so you can switch out the symbols. More. And the cool thing about these is they are rechargeable. So you don't have to deal with batteries. Um, that's really nice because a lot of them use nine volts. They're expensive. They get left on, the battery dies. So that's the nice thing about these talking bricks. And those would be considered mid tech. Um, and this is another mid tech device. It's called a super talker feather touch. Um, cool thing about this one is it has, it has different um, grids that you can replace. So um, you can start with just a single, just one. It. Oops. <laughs> you can start with just one, one or that. two. It's sensitive, as you can see. Um, you, can, you can start with just one or two and then go up to four or eight. So it's progressive, it grows with, with the communicator. So, and then it also has, um, it has eight, or you can plug in um, external switches. And then it has eight different levels. And then, yeah, four different grid sizes. So you can have eight different things. Like this is just core words. You can have food choices. Um, different academic things that you might need to talk about. Uh, and like I said, it's very sensitive. I, I just like barely touched it and it, it speaks and you do have to record it. Um, but yeah, it, it works well and it's nice that it's, it's progressive. And similar devices like GoTox, you can get them with you know four, four or five buttons up to like 32, I believe. Um, so those are some good mid tech AAC options. Okay. <clears throat> the next category is alternative access. And that's actually kind of a broad um, category, but what it means is that someone who's not, who has a disability and is not able to access a tool or a computer in a way that um, other people might do it. Um, so it involves what you see here on the screen, like pushing a switch that Jackie's already been kind of introducing us to. Um, other switches, the one that's next to it, that's a triangle, that is a proximity switch. We're gonna show you how that works. Um, and then the 
the laptop is actually a touch screen. So you might not have thought of that before, but a touch screen is alternative way to access your computer. It's not requiring touching your keyboard or a mouse, similar with an iPad. And then um, at the bottom left, the person in the wheelchair is using probably a sip and puff, some kind of switch that goes into the mouth. Um, it could be one that they move with their head or it could be a sip and puff that they're using to activate something. And then um, the one with the two, the yellow and the white buttons, that is a Bluetooth switch that you can connect to an iPad or different things. And then the one on the right is um, even more cool. That is for eye or head tracking. So if you are not familiar with something called eye gaze, it is now available in iPads. It's also available, um, you can, this um, one you see here on the slide actually connects to um, like a communication device and it will track the person's eyes and what they are looking at so that instead of like tapping on a button to say a word, their eyes would focus on that button. And it's basically um, based on how long they linger, their eye, their focus lingers on that, and then it would activate it. So that's a really quick introduction to, to eye gaze and head tracking, but lots of different ways to access um, technology. Yep, there we go. So first I have, yeah, let me just leave there. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of silly. Um, this, is a, a wobble switch. It's kind of what it sounds like. It has a base actually with suction, so it'll stay where it is. And this is nice for a child. So even pushing a button sometimes can be difficult for a child that doesn't have good motor skills. And so that's why this is sort of like Hello, a baby. swipe. Peekaboo is the most fun with you. So this is a little teddy bear that's um, switch, <laughs> switch adapted. And all that the person has to do is basically bump into the yellow lever Hello, and it's baby. going to activate or maybe deactivate the toy. So that's one, there are many, many kinds of switches, but that's one kind, that's a wobble switch. Hello, baby. And then we Hello, have, baby. yeah, this one is pretty sensitive. Um, this is different than the one we had on the slide, but it's a, <laughs> it's a proximity switch, which is um, what it sounds like. It's basically when anything becomes, you know, in, in the area, it will activate. So really nice for someone that has limited motion that all they have to do is come near it. Hello, baby. Peekaboo is the most fun with Or swipe their hand across it. And it's turning it off again. So that's called the honeybee. This is a pretty, pretty fancy little device that has um, sensitivity um, adjustments and things like that. All right. Unplug it. <laughs> Any questions at this point, Paul, that we should be aware of? Okay. Okay. So the next category we're going to talk about is alternative keyboards and mice, kind of some alternative access too. Um, alternative keyboards could be something as simple as a more ergonomic keyboard that helps someone have a better positioning if they are you know, having repetitive stress um, problems with their wrists or their hands. They can also be something, um, this one in the picture that you see with the bright yellow, that is like a high contrast and actually the, 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 fun, the text, the letters on there are larger. So it's high contrast for someone with low vision. It's also Bluetooth, so it can be, I mean, it's not corded. And then um, the one next to it is really unique. That is um, a half keyboard. And um, I'll talk about that more in depth in just a moment. And then across the bottom, you see some different kinds of adapted mice. So all of those are things that can be used to access a computer. So the first one being a joystick. So that can be easier than using a mouse for some people with some buttons, but um, these joysticks sometimes are programmable. Um, so you can have the buttons do different things. 
And then the next one is called a big track, big track two trackball. Yeah. And I'll show you that one in a moment. And then the, the third one is um, actually adjustable. So um, you've probably seen or heard of mice that are like vertical instead of um, having your hand flat. This one is actually adjustable. So it can adjust to the person and the kind of, you know, what's gonna be most helpful for them. So it can adjust more vertical or more flat and the thumb can move in and out. So um, it's just a little bit more customizable. And then the last one is the roller mouse and I'm gonna show you that one as well. So this is the keyboard um, and it's a pretty nice size, kind of compact. It works really well with an iPad. You know, a lot of students have iPads and that is not, typing on an iPad is not a very great way to learn touch typing with the on-screen keyboard. So this is the kind of thing that we might recommend um, for a student to be using. Connect it with your iPad um, and then you're doing your typing and it also, like, a, you know, has that really nice contrast. This one's white instead of yellow, but that really nice high contrast. And that's what that is. And then this is by a company called Matthias. And I'm gonna actually hold it up a little bit. Um, this takes a little bit of, of learning, a little bit of a learning curve, but if an individual only has a use of one hand, then this could be a real game changer. Um, I know some people might use this for gaming or something, so they have a hand free for something else, but you know. Um, so, my glasses, so I can see it. Um, well, yeah, it is left handed, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but they, they also make a keyboard that is a keyboard that can be adjusted. So it's right hand only or left hand only or both. Um, but this one's kind of neat just because it's so compact. And then there is a shift key that allows you to get to the alternate, um, alternating letters. So it has the entire, what we usually call when in QWERTY keyboard, the entire left hand and the entire right hand is all mapped on here. And it's just a shift to what would be, but using one hand, what would be your right hand um, letters um, or symbols or numbers. So hopefully that makes sense. And that one is, that one gets plugged in. Thank you. And then a mouse, a great mouse for kids. Um, so this functions like a regular mouse. This is your roller ball where you're moving your cursor around on the page and up and down. And then these are the right and left click buttons. So you can see how that is a, a much more gross motor skill than a regular mouse would be. And you can also plug switches into each side. So you could have switches out here. I mean, you could even do like a foot switch or whatever. I mean, there's just, once you can have a switch port, then it gives you a lot of, a lot of options on ways that you could access that. Thank you. And then the roller mouse, this is a really unusual one. This one sits, at the bottom of a keyboard. So you'd have a keyboard like this and then you're typing and then you have this, you can see that it's like a tube that basically rolls up and down and slides back and forth. That's kind of working like your trackball to move around your cursor on the page. Um, you can, um, then you can right and left click. There's another one here. Um, and then there's also um, some quick shortcut keys here, like this says copy and this says paste. And this one is double click. So anyone that has any kind of, you know, problem with um, moving a mouse or maybe clicking too much or whatever. Anyway, this was, this is really nice. And it also has a really nice ergonomic effect in that you're not needing to move your hand over to the side. And sometimes that's something, a movement that a person's not able to do, then everything they need to do is all right within this little sort of square right here. So that is called the Roller Mouse Red by Contour. Okay. Next up is reading. Thank you. 
yours. Yes. So reading, there are lots of great reading tools out there, low and high tech, of course. Um, things like reading, reading guides, that yellow strip that just kind of guides the eyes where to go, helps you keep your place. You can move it up and down the book. Um, for some people, certain colors make it easier to read. So, and then also for, for kids, like it might be more engaging if they can read. Version nine is ready. Sorry, the, the next tool is talking. Um, yeah, so for a kid, it might be more engaging if they can read with their favorite color. And they can also be used as a bookmark. Um, there's a tool called Microsoft Immersive Reader, which is included in the Microsoft 365 online, which anyone can get for free with an email. I won't show it. Um, we've shown it at other workshops, but you put copy paste text in Microsoft Word and it, you can change the appearance, the background colors, the font, and it will read it out loud and highlight the words as it goes. And it has very, oh, very natural, um, natural, nice sounding voices. Hang on, uh, there's a question. We'll, we'll see a lot of these tools and more in next week's uh, AT for Oh yes, next week we have an AT for reading workshop. What's the what's the date and time on that? Yeah. <laughs> next Wednesday. Well, pa Paul's checking real quick. Yeah, next Wednesday. Um, yeah, so he'll share a lot of those tools. Um, another option is Bookshare, which um, people like anyone with students with a visual disability physical disability or text related um, disability can um, get that, pr uh, that program for free. Um, and you need a med medical or educational diagnosis of a disability. So there's a form that can be signed by a doctor or a teacher in order to use that service. Bookshare has a lot of books available in text to speech format. Again, where it re highlights the words and reads it out loud. They have um, an app or, and also um, just a web-based reader. And they have a lot of textbooks available and you can request textbooks if they're not available. So in the summer, find out your, your book list and get those in Bookshare if you need to. Um, and then there's an app, the icon on the right, lower right is called Prismo. And that's an app that will scan like on an iPad or phone, scan, um, text and make it readable using um, optical character rec recognition or OCR. So that will, um, yes, yeah, scan a text, make it readable. You can read it out loud from the app. So that's a great, great thing for students to use in school. Okay, now for the demos. So yeah, so this is my bookmark, the reading helpers. Um, yeah, they have different, different colors. Um, I just brought a few. Um, yeah, so you can, yeah, guide your reading. Uh, yeah, use it to find your place. Um, helps you um, not get lost. So these are a nice low tech tool. Like I said before, like maybe a kid might be more excited to read if their favorite color is involved. Now, okay, this next tool is very cool. It's called the OrCam Read. Um, oh, sorry, I think that's, oh, weird. Um, this device will scan an entire page of text and read it out loud. And it also has some smart reading, um, smart reading options. So you can, you can say, um, tell me the headlines if you're reading a newspaper. Um, so I'll show it to you now. Oh, where's my, oh, there it is. I don't know if you can see there's, oops. Ah. Um, yeah, hang on, let me hold it back further. There's a, you can barely see it. Yeah, there's you can barely a, see, but there's a laser. A red sort of box. There. 
Sir Simon Technology Center, Lending Library, a Library of Assistive Technology, about the Lending Library. The Simon right. Technology Center Lending Library provides short term loans for weeks for consumers of any age. So, one thing that's important about this is that this is not connected to Wi Fi. To help make a purchase yeah. decision yeah. for short term. Um, so the software is embedded in the, the device. Um, it's beeping again. It is beeping a lot. I'm not sure why. Turn it off. And, um, but as a little handheld device, it's pretty powerful. It does a really excellent job of reading text. And so it could be used. Sorry. <laughs> Sometimes I have this problem. Devices don't turn off. Yeah. It could be used, say, like at a museum. You could click for those long descriptions they have. You could, you know, do that and listen to it. And you can also put a headphone um, into it yep. to do it more discreetly. Yeah. And there's also, they have another device called the My Eye that attaches to glasses. Um, and that one has a few more capabilities. It'll describe a scene in front of you. Um, it can also be used to like, you can scan barcodes and it'll tell you the product. Uh, does lots of, lots of great things. Writing. So there are lots of, yeah, lots of great writing tools. Um, they can be simple, like adapted paper. There's paper that has like, you know, bright yellow highlights and like raised lines, um, different, different sizes of right, like where you write. Um, then pencil grips too are like, can help you hold a pen, pen or pencil correctly. And uh, they can also just make writing more fun and engaging for kids. If they find a grip they think looks really cool, they might be more excited to write. Um, and there's also some computer-based writing tools. CoWriter is a, it's a Chrome extension uh, and it does word prediction. So it'll give you like a list of words and you can hover over them. It reads them out loud. And you can just hit the number of the word you want. And it, um, it'll, yeah, help you um, come up with ideas for writing and make it a little easier. Add something. What can I add? Something? Yes, Sarah. You can. Um, the word prediction can be really helpful for students with dyslexia, who often don't know how to spell what they're trying to write. And so once you start kind of writing, then it does sort of a creative, um, you know, tries to interpret what you're trying to 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 type. And um, it can also just be. Uh, helpful for students that just have difficulty writing because it will kind of it kind of um, chooses words that would maybe naturally come at that point in the sentence. Like at the start of a sentence, it's more likely going to suggest the or a, and then after a noun, it's more likely to suggest some verb. So it can kind of help support the writing process. Yeah, thank you. Good addition. Uh, and then we also have another smart pen. This one records. It records as you take notes and it, your notes sync to um, what you've written. So if you write a certain symbol or like I for important homework, um, I'll, I'll demonstrate this in a second. But yeah, it helps you kind of organize your notes and find what you need to find. Um, yeah, I will switch that. Oh, there, there it is. Turn it on. So this is LiveScribe yep. Echo 2. Yep, LiveScribe Echo 2 Smart Pen. And it has um, special notebooks that have, I don't know if you can see it, teeny tiny little dots. And that's how it will recognize um, what you're writing. Yeah, and it has a little little camera on the end <laughs> of it that, um, yeah, I, I don't know the, exactly how the tech works, but it, it's pretty cool. Um, and to start it, you have these, um, you can probably see it, you have these little symbols down here, record, pause, stop, a um, few different ones, volume. So you can just click on record and it'll start recording. Oh, yep. Yeah, you can see it, it says record and it's counting right there. So it is recording what I'm saying and this is gonna be on your test. Oh, so now I can click on the T and it'll show me what's on the test. 
you can, um, every time a heading gets changed, you can write the heading. Like, and then it will go right to that heading. As you can tell, I have, I don't have the best handwriting, but that's okay. <laughs> it's good for people yeah, like you. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so yeah, you can, um, oh, this is important. So you can use like simple things. So now I'll go stop. And then when I touch the pen to something I've written, it goes to that point. Like simple things. So now I'll go stop. So I'll hit. And then it will go right to that heading. As you can tell, I have, I don't have the best handwriting, but that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's how it works. It's a little hard to show, but um, I've never used it in a lecture setting, but I can imagine it would be, it would be a nice jump to um, things you find important or interesting or helpful. It's a really uh, great tool for students, especially I would say high school and college. Yes. Um, there's a lot of information coming at them and a lot of students struggle with what do I need to write down. Um, students that have ADHD have trouble trying to write things down while they're also paying attention. So it's capturing it so that they can focus. Students with dysgraphia that have a lot of difficulty with handwriting will say that they take notes and they can't read them later when they're at home. So it just has a lot of different applications. Yep. Pretty fun. Okay. Oh. 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 There. Oh, and another another thing I, I didn't get to um, Otter AI. That that is a computer based program. They actually have a select number of minutes. I think three hundred a month. You can try out for free. That does transcription, so it will transcribe in writing what's being what's being said. And then it'll tie that to the recording and, re and uh, go highlight the words um, as it goes. Um, it's, yeah, it could be very helpful. Uh, and the cool thing about that is you can give it a try. It's not like a trial. It's just 300 minutes a month before you subscribe. Um, yeah. Before you subscribe. Um, yeah, and that one, yeah, we don't have time to demo it, but it works, works really well. Oh, oh yeah. Um, <laughs> And then uh, speech to text uh, or dictation is something that's built into uh, Google Docs and Microsoft Word, where you can use your voice to write or to type. And it does, yeah, it does a good job of recognizing. Um, sometimes it'll get a word wrong here and there, but, um, but yeah, it it's just it's a nice way if you have trouble physically typing or handwriting then that's a way you can get your thoughts on paper. Okay, and the next category is math. And we have um, what are called math manipulatives. Those are used in the classroom, different ways to kind of conceptualize math. And we'll look at um, one of those. There are a lot of games that help you learn about math. This one over here to the right, this is Pizza Co. That's an Osmo game that you use um, with an iPad. And it's really great because it's really fun, but it is like running a little pizza store and you can see you make the little pizzas, but then you also um, make change for people. That's a skill that a lot of students have trouble with, that kind of counting of money. So it's really great that way. And then, um, I also have here this MyScript calculator. So there are, there are some really important um, apps like for an iPad um, that can help with either keeping the math um, organized like on a grid kind of paper or MyScript. You can actually um, write on there kind of messy and it will um, turn those numbers. It will recognize those numbers and use them like a calculator. Um, and yeah, so let me go ahead and show you, can you get me the abacus? Yes. Okay, great. So this is just an add and subtract abacus that we're all probably somewhat familiar with, but um, you know, I like it because it's really, it's kind of eye catching and it's rainbow colors and young children can start learning those math concepts. I think these little um, things slide out. And there's numbers there. So 
So that's another way to use, whoops, how do I make that show? There we go. Numbers on there to practice with. Yeah. So that's a pretty fun little, uh, little math toy, I'll call it. Um, and then this is just a part of the See and Solve Manipulatives kit, which is really quite a large kit with um, pegs and discs and straight, I don't know, yeah, you know all kinds of things in there, like beading. Um, so these are discs that go on here. And then there's all these different numbers. And so it is just a nice way to have a hands-on, also visual representation of math. That's called the C and Salt. Pretty quick overview of math. Keep your eye on our website because there will be a math tools workshop later in the year. Okay, now we're at daily living aids. Another really broad category. Anything that helps someone do something in their you know day to day living falls within this category. Um, so yeah, we've got feeding and eating, dressing and grooming, like a button hook, anything that helps you pull your sock up, um, a reacher that can help someone reach something if they can't bend over, um, fine motor development, this little, um, set over at the bottom, right? Those are little fine motor tools for children, um, to learn how to grasp things and yeah, there's little tweezers and things there. And then even executive function support. So timers, for example, would be a daily living aid. So I'm gonna just show you a few of these. There we go. Okay. So this is a time tracker. There's a, there's a, um, it's, it's kind of, it's, this is the mini. There's a larger one that's, you know, taller, but I like this one because it's so easy to use. Um, the light never represents very well on the on the screen, but um, we have here. Uh, let's say we want a student to do their homework for thirty minutes. Then I've set it so that there's twenty minutes that the light will be green, and then ten minutes that the light will be yellow, and then when I push start, it turns to green and it will show the green light. Yeah, it'll show the green light for 20 minutes. And then the student knows that um, when it turns yellow, that their time is almost up. And then when it turns red, their time is up. And actually, as I talk about this, I realize I kind of like it better for um, timing their, um, like their break time. So the way I would have used it as a parent would be, here's your Game Boy time and you get half an hour. And so when it turns yellow, you need to know then you need to be wrapping up that game. You need to be saving or whatever. And when it turn, turns red, it actually has a volume. You can have it beep and it flashes red. And then I, as the parent, would have walked in the room and known that that Game Boy should have been put away and that homework should have been started. So I love this little thing. And Time it, Tracker Mini. It also, it beeps and flashes when it changes to yellow as well. Oh, so yeah. you have an auditory. Turn the oh. <laughs> okay. I know. Hey, what's it called now? It's called switch. switch. Yeah, he has a switch now. <laughs> he just grew up a little. Um, this is a eat well um, dining set. So they designed these specifically with these bright colors to help um, increase interest in, in the eating experience. But also there's rubber grippers on the bottom so they don't slide. They're slanted so that the food or the soup or whatever goes towards one direction. I guess it's this way. The, um, the spoons are curved in a nice ergonomic way and they're nice and grippy. And um, so there's two bowls, two spoons. And then there's also these great cups, which also have a, a grippy thing on the bottom and they have lids and then a straw can go through there as well. One has a handle, one does not. So this is a whole set that you can um, try, you can borrow and see if it will work for the individual um, needing that kind of support. Okay, the last daily living aid I'm going to show is called the Lil Nipper. 
So this is a fingernail clipper. Um, and these come in three different sizes. I believe I brought the child size, this green one. And um, this is a pretty cool tool. This was developed locally here in Minneapolis. And um, it is both for say children that have that fear of that, you know, fingernail clipper coming at them. Um, and also just for people that need to be able to do it independently um, and have difficulty managing that kind of a nail clipper. So when I turn the button on behind, this is actually where you slide, you kind of hold your finger and you put your fingernail through this little opening here. And then there's blades that go across. It sounds kind of scary, but it's not. So it's making a, it's making a back and forth. And because there's this little, um, space you can't hurt yourself you can't get any you really can't get any skin in there it's just the fingernail can slide through that opening and um it's nice that it gives agency to, to children you know they can they can choose when they're going to stick their finger in there pull it out or whatever um or an older person you can actually set it on the table and use it so it could be a one-handed thing so um th that is the little nipper and it used to be called clip different but this is their new model then on the bottom, uh, your fingernails collect in there. You just open it up, dump it. Oh, and fun fact, the, the owner inventor was on Shark Tank. So you might see him this upcoming season. Hey, right, health and wellness, that's you. Yeah, so health and wellness devices, they've come a long way. Uh, we have med medication dispensers. Um, the dose flip is one that we have in our library. It's subscription based and it connects with an app. And when it's time to take your meds, it it's very loud. It like, yeah, we could hear it across, across the office practically. Um, it's very, very loud. It notifies you. And then when you flip it, flip it over, it stops. Um, stops beeping, you've taken your meds. And I think it, I believe it, it'll stay open for a little while and then close. Um, and then there are a whole bunch of different apps, calming meditation apps available. I believe this one is called Mindful Powers. It's shown here. And then there are also wearable devices. Um, the bottom left picture is called the Muse. Uh, it uses, Brain waves. brain waves, yes. <laughs> this is not my area of expertise, but it uses brain waves um, and like it's for like meditation and calming. And the uh, Sensate, um, that that device is pretty cool. It it uses um, it, it sits on your chest, like on your breastbone, and it uses vibrations, infrasonic vibrations to. Um, uh, to tone the vagus nerve. So um, it has a calming effect of the nervous system. And it pairs with, it pairs with um, like apps that have different soundscapes. And yeah, so it, it'll be re relaxing. I think it also has ones that'll energize you. Uh, so that's a pretty cool, pretty cool device. I will show you a couple right now. Yeah, here's what the dose flip looks like. Um, you can set it, uh, yeah, for multiple times a day. Um, and then it has a screen that tells you the time. And yeah, like I said, beeps, flashes, and then it, it'll open, like it'll shift. So the pill you need to take is open at the program at, time. At the program mm -hmm. time. Yeah, and you just flip it and then it turns closes. off, closes. That's a pretty cool thing. And then this is the Sensate, the, the device that um, uses vibrations to calm. Yeah, it has, um, yeah, you pair it with an app. Yeah, so it, um, yeah, it actually, it feels, it feels really cool. Like it, I don't know, kind of gives me like that shutter feeling. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good way to relax at night. It's, it says it helps you sleep or calm down. Uh, yeah, well, it so has different, it has yeah, different settings. Different within settings app. within the app. Yeah, different kinds yeah. of music. To... Yeah, different music. Um, yeah, we don't have it paired up, but that's what it looks like. It's pretty, 
pretty compact. It has a lanyard. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a nice device available in our lending library. Hang on. Oh, I see. Oh, oh what's going on? You just oh. too fast. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so those are our health and health and wellness devices in technology. Okay, vision and hearing. So there are lots of different low and high tech um, devices, anything from like a magnifying glass or something that magnifies the whole page. Um, there are also um, video magnifiers where you can interact a little more in depth with what, you're, what you have. You can zoom in, zoom out, change the colors. Um, yeah, you, they can switch to like light on dark or uh, yeah, different, different modes. Uh, there are also refreshable braille displays, so they can hook up to an iPad or a computer and what's on the screen will display in braille for you. And then um, for hearing, we have a few of these in our library, alarm clocks with a bed shaker. So the little device, the shaking device can go like under your pillow and it'll, and there's also, there's an outlet in the back where you can plug, plug in a lamp it'll turn on when your alarm is set. Uh, and they're, they're good for people with hearing impairments, but also um, a lot of our library members borrow them because there are some, some young people that sleep so deeply, even noise won't wake them up. So it just kind of jolts, jolts them awake. There, okay. So this is the sonic alert. Um, alarm clock. It's also very, very loud. Um, and then this is the bed shaker piece. And then there's the spot where you can plug in, plug in a lamp. Um, so they're pretty, pretty nice if you need that kind of a way to wake up. And then Sarah is setting up the video magnifier. Let's this. see how's it going to work under here. Oh, let's ah. hold it up to the camera first. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is considered portable. You can see it's like a size of a little laptop. Yeah. And um, this is called the Clover Book. And then um, I'm going to pull the base down. And then, Jackie, can you pull that up? Yeah. <laughs> Oops. Ah. So this is a, a portable video magnifier. If anyone is familiar with the old ones that were desktop and they were really big and bulky. Yeah, they, they were like the size of a computer monitor. Just went to sleep already? Yeah, I think when you folded it up. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, so we're gonna turn it on again. Yeah, sorry, it's a little, little awkward with the dot camera. You can get the idea. There. So we have that same flyer that we were showing earlier and we're placing it underneath this and you can, there are knobs, knobs that you turn that can zoom, zoom in. Oh, you see, you can also do. Yeah. Screen. Oh yeah. It has a touch screen as well. Panning speed adjust. Oh yeah. And it has a little toggle so you can Finish. move around. And it has um, an option to switch, switch it like contrast. Um, okay, some of them, yeah. That, so some people, it's a little easier to read if it's not bright white. So it has, yeah, has a lot of different options. There, there are buttons on the side, or oh, that's the volume. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that that's one we have in our lending library too. Oh yeah, you can take a picture. Sarah's the expert on these. Um, you can take pictures of the text also. And Cloverbook has um, uh, several different models. This is the light, so it's the most basic one, but um, the other two, whatever they're called, the Pro or whatever, um, they also have like a distance camera. So you can actually 
um, bend this screen down and you can um, see like across the room. So it could be used like in a classroom setting um, to magnify what's on the bulletin board or to magnify the, the teacher to be able to see that better. Um, another thing I really like about this is that the angle is very adjustable on it. And um, there's also nothing in the way here. It's very magnified, it's kind of scary. Um, there's nothing in the way here. So you could do something, you know, it could be very useful um, for people wanting to do um, uh, any kind of crafting or um, woodworking or any kind of tools, you know, a little tiny screwdriver, you need to like tighten your glasses with anything like that. You can just fit your hands right under there and just do that. You can also bend it down and kind of lean over it. So um, it's a pretty nice, pretty nice device. Yeah, and some of the the pro, the higher higher level devices will also do the um, it'll uh, the OCR where it'll recognize text and read it out loud, not yeah. the light. Yeah, right. that's another feature that is an option. Okay, I'll go ahead and get to your next slide. Okay, so environmental, envir yeah, sorry. environmental controls are just ways that people can interact with their environment. Um, like things like using your phone to turn on the lights uh, or using an, an Alexa to like, you know, control your TV, your, well, pretty much, they, they do a lot. Um, and then, let's see. Oh, uh, and there's a there's a device called the power link that it will demonstrate. You can hook it up to any electric electronic device and use a switch to turn it off and on. And this can be used in cooking. Someone can control a blender or a, a mixer uh, or anything that can turn on a fan, a light. Um, so just ways for people to meaning meaningfully interact with their environment and increase independence. Uh, and they're also, yeah, smart outlets. So you can plug in a light to the outlet and use your phone to turn it off and on. So I will, there. This is what the power link looks like. It has different um, settings. So um, timed, timed, you can set it for over many, I don't know how, maybe, I think it goes up to 60 seconds. But you can set it um, to, just to increase switch use, like five seconds, turn it back on. Um, and then latch is like off and on. And then direct means you have to be pushing the switch for the thing to be activated. So I'll show you how that works. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see, let me plug it in. Okay, so we have a lava lamp here. Good. Yeah. So press the switch. I really can't see that very well. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, there. Press the switch. It stays on for five minutes or five seconds. Sorry. And the cool thing about it is it counts down the time. Um, I just learned that today for the first time. Uh, but yeah, like I said, you could do off and on hold the switch uh, and yeah, use it in lots of different ways. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Yeah. A lot, a lot of programmable. Yeah. Stuff, yeah. Different, so. different modes. Uh, More than I can imagine right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and it also has two, you can do two things, two devices at the same time. So you can have two students or children. One does one thing, one, one does another. Um, yeah fun for like turning on yeah, sensory lights or uh, yeah, pretty much anything. Okay. And you talked about um, the echo, all the oh, smart speakers. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah, smart speakers. Yeah. Okay, now we're at sensory aids. This is our last, our last demo slide, right? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, so sensory aids are things that help, can help people um, 
to calm down, things that can help um, students with ADHD to kind of get out some of their energy to help so that they're better able to focus. Um, things that can um, help students with autism. Um, so here we have like over to the right, you have the little child with the, the earmuffs on. Um, so blocking out sound that is overstimulating. Um, and then over to the left, we have this fidget. And then below that is a sloth. We'll show you that in a minute. It's weighted. So um, many different weighted items are available now and that can have a very calming, um, that deep pressure, um, very calming effect. And then um, I'm kind of jumping all over the slide here. Um, over to the right bottom is a, a deep pressure vest. So that's a vest that, that's probably a child size one there, but we have them also in adult size. And the vest goes on and then the Velcro's on the sides and you can pull it and tighten it for that compression, um, that comforting compression feeling. And then the two items in the middle are what I would call alternative seating. The one on the top is just a cushion. We have various shapes cushions, some are round, that one's a wedge. Um, and so that is kind of, you know, that's inflated, that can kind of help with the, the need to wiggle um, used on a chair. And then the one on the bottom is called a runts um, ball, ball stool, actually, because that's a smaller one. So there's actually a little yoga ball in there that's inflated and it kind of can just give some nice um, give to it, some kind of bouncy kind of give. We also have ones like that that swivel um, so, so you can turn. And um, yeah, so lots of different alternative seating that um, we actually loan out and people can borrow and try and see what works well for them or for their child. Yeah, we have adult, adult size, older kids size too. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> yeah, and um, fidgets are pretty well known, I think. Um, one of the things that uh, teachers really like is when the fidget is not noisy. So it's not distracting to other students. This one I really like because it's color is so engaging and that the way it feels, it's just kind of stretchy and, and you can just pop these little things back and forth and it's, it's kind of satisfying. Um, and then this is another one. Uh, this one's pretty cool and just fun to just play with holding your hands. This one could work pretty well under the desk to kind of not be a distraction to other students, but be able to have something to just kind of basically fidget with. Okay, and then here's our sloth. Lie down so they can see you. Hello. <laughs> um, he's weighted. I don't remember how much he weighs, but like even his arms and legs are weighted. And he actually has a little, he's like a little backpack. You can take some a few things with you, but there's like weighted beads in there. Jackie, you want to put it on for yeah. us? Oh, wrong way. He's gonna be facing you. Yeah, oh, this way. supposed to face away. Oh, I think so. To be really cute, don't you? Yeah, everyone wants to see his face. Oh yeah, you, know, you have to come over in the camera. Could be this. Oh yeah. Can say we could. Oh, it's upside down. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can see the sloth. So there's the sloth. Or so it has little snaps on the feet. So you can, or you could put it on on the front and then he's a little comforting weighted buddy right on the chest. Yeah, the snaps, the feet um, snap to the hands. Mm -hmm. It's just fun to hug. And very soft. Very soft and the, cor the face is like a corduroy. So it's kind of textured. Any questions? Everyone's just following along. Oops. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about our services. And this slide was in here twice. Um, so we do, we have referenced a little bit. Jackie and I both work with the lending library. Um, here at PACER, we do have a lending library. And um, that membership is free for anyone in Minnesota, a family or individual or a single professional. So an individual professional is free as well. And that's a pretty recent within the last year development that we 
took away the membership fee for all those people because we really wanted to promote um, the access to assistive technology and letting people have the opportunity to try things. So that's really what it is, try before you buy. Um, you or your student, you're just not gonna know how something's gonna work for you until you have it, preferably in that environment where you're gonna be using it, whether that's at home or you know, borrow it and take it to school and find out what will work. So you might you know, try four different things. They might be, each item might be 50, 100, $200 each. But if one out of the four works and the others don't, then you're gonna be really glad that you tried it and you know which one that you're then going to invest in. Um, the graphic there on the slide is just a screenshot of our online catalog. So you can um, see all the, all the tools that we have um, online. You don't have to sign up in order to see that. The link is there at the top of the page. Um, we also have apps that we push out. So mobile apps that we push out to Apple devices. So either an iPad or an iPhone. Um, some apps, um, some apps are not very expensive, but there are some that are like 20 bucks, 50 bucks, and then communication apps on up, you know, 100, 200. Um, so those are, are important things to borrow and try and see if it will be helpful for you or if you like it. Um, schools and organizations can also join the library. That is a $200 a year membership. It's still a really great deal because like a school, like you can sign up on there, a bunch of different teachers, professionals um, to borrow on that account. Um, individuals can borrow four items at a time for four weeks. Um, and schools and organizations though, with their paid membership can borrow up to eight items at a time. And there are some schools that have like an assistive technology um, uh, professional, someone in that role that come and they pick up things and they distribute them to like different classroom teachers. So they're just sort of like that point person and then they come and, and borrow things and, and the schools, the students try them out in the classroom. Um, I forgetting anything about the library. We, well, can, we also ship things. So here in the, in the metro area, we're located in Bloomington. Um, so you can pick up, drop off, um, during our open hours, um, which are on our website, they're Monday and Thursday. Um, we also have an opportunity to, to do that at a East Metro site in St. Did I say that right? Yep. East Metro, yeah, in St. Paul, um, to help people that are on the other side of the cities. But we also do ship things. So if you are um, up north or you know, outstate Minnesota, we can ship things to you. And then we just ask that you pay to ship them back to us. We will also ship something to people that live nearby. So if you're just a busy parent and you want us to mail it to you, we will. And then you can choose to um, drive down and, and drop it off when you're done. Oh yeah, and the East Metro location is at us. Um, select St. Paul Public Libraries. So we've been accepting drop-offs and some some pickups. By appointment. By appointment, yeah. yes. You don't give it to the library. <laughs> no. <laughs> Okay, that's you. Oh, yep. So one of our awesome services that we offer at the STC is assistive technology consultations. It's a yeah, free informal exploration of AT. Yeah, we don't make any formal recommendations or do assessments, but we just come up with some tools that you could try. Explore, explore mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then we will, so we usually have about a 30 minute phone call, figure out the needs. And again, all ages, um, not just children, can utilize this service. So we have a phone call, figure out what the needs are. Then we come up with a list of ideas to try, and we, um, we demonstrate them, show, show you how to use them. And we can do this in person at, um, in Bloomington here or over Zoom. And yeah, like I said, all ages. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really, really fun. I, I usually work with the younger kids, and they're just, they're a blast. Uh, yeah. Well, and I work with the older kids and they're, a they're fun too. Yes. And the older, older adults who yep. are a blast. Oh yeah. <laughs> Everyone's fun. Yeah. We also have a couple, uh, pro projects for younger children. Um, project kite is, um, is a service we do for, so it's a uh, team based. It's includes like a parent teacher and, 
and usually a related service professional like a speech path or OT. And um, yeah, it's yeah, kids ages three to eight. So one of our colleagues does three workshops for the, it, and it's offered in the fall, fall and the spring. So it's three, three workshops tailored to the needs of the student. Uh, so they can go over things like communication, sensory, um, academics, and uh, uh, fa families participating in Kite get an iPad that's loaded with a bunch of awesome apps uh, to try with their kid. Uh, so they can borrow that app for the, the semester. Uh, forget, is it, is it how, how many months is Kite? Three months? Three months? It's three. three yeah. Three, yeah, three, so three different workshops. And then Go Baby Go is a program. It's national, but we have a chapter here. Um, we, uh, we switch it at um, Power, Power Wheels cars. Uh, so the family would provide the car and then we would modify it so you could drive it using switches or we'd um, like adapt the seating. So if the kid doesn't have strong core strength, can't sit up by themselves, we'll um, make them more supported. And yeah, like it's fun seeing kids be able to explore their environment when they weren't otherwise able to, because mm -hmm. um, not, this sh shouldn't be the case, but a lot of young kids aren't, don't get approved for power wheelchairs until they're older, but like they need that ability to explore their environment and have that autonomy. So it's a great option if insurance won't cover a power chair. We also have STEM programming for teens with disabilities. Um, Excite Camp is a, a five-day camp in the summer. They actually meet on alternating um, days, so it's not it's not five intensively consecutive days. Um, it's for specifically for girls and non-binary students, and um, we have um, sponsors come in and they do all different kinds of activities um, with the students, and we have teachers and. Um, they, um, you can kind of see in this picture here, they're building something like they've had an architect firm come in and work with them. And um, so that's really fun. And then we also have tech for teens and that is more of like workshops. They are, I think primarily on Saturdays, um, workshops for teenagers, um, focusing on learning to code or robotics or 3D printing. The um, space that Jackie and I are in right now is basically our lab. It's like a makerspace lab that we have um, built up with new equipment. Um, that fancy new thing is called a glow forge, right? Glow yes. forge, laser, laser, cutter. laser cutter. Yeah, yeah. So we've got a lot of exciting um, tools here, and and we're going to be developing that program um, more and more for teens. And some of those sessions are hybrid, so you mm -hmm. can attend virtually. So much that when camp registration starts, and it'll be sometime in early 2024. Oh, yep, sometime in early 2024. That's when camp registration will start. Other places to learn about AT. Um, the Minnesota STAR program. So every state has um, is required by the federal government to have an AT program. So ours is called um, STAR here in Minnesota. And um, so we're one of the partners of STAR, but they have devices and services, you know, somewhat similar to what we do um, through the state. There are also um, a number of, I don't know how many, centers for independent living um, throughout the state, different regions. And, and other states have them too. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I already said that, state AT programs. So that's a nice link right there. If you are not in Minnesota, as I know we get lots of people out of state, that um, link there, that AT3 center, that's where you can look up any um, state in the country and find that state um, sponsored AT program. Public library is another place. They have audiobooks, they have large print books, things like that. Um, colleges and universities have disability services offices, another place to learn about things. And then ATIA is the Assistive Technology Industry Association. That's kind of the professional association. So um, there's PACER's website. If you have not been, please do visit. Um, this uh, slide shows you some of the different programs that we have here. We're right there in the middle, the Simon Technology Center. 
but we do also have, um, I talked a little bit at the very beginning about parent advocates. So that's a big part of our program is parents call and they get paired with an advocate and they get support um, when their child they feel is not getting the services that they need or the support that they need at school. Um, then those parent advocates work with them to help, you know, they basically understand all the legal parts of it and can help support the parents to get what their child needs. Um, we have other programs like the Children's Mental Health Program. Um, the one on the top right is the Transition and Employment Center. So that's supporting um, young people as they graduate or move on from high school and go into community living or employment. Um, yeah, so a lot of programs that we have here at PACER. Okay, are there any, any questions that you guys have? You can ask them now. Um, and here's our contact information. Um, yeah, email, phone number. Uh, you can. Or that, that's the main pacer. Yeah, that's oh, the main, that's pacer, the main number. pacer number. You can call uh, and ask for us. Yeah, so like you can ask for us and leave a message. And yeah, there's our website. And we appreciate you guys joining us. So for the evaluation, you can. Um, well, Paul will be putting the link in, in the chat right now. It's done. Good. Awesome. And once you fill that out, you, you submit it, and then um, there will be a link for the certificate of attendance. Do we add the picture of it? Oh, no. no. Oh, okay. Um, so, there's, so once you finish, don't close it out, but click on the blue link to get your certificate. And if, if something happens and you, um, yeah, if, if it closes out, you don't mean to click out, you can send us an email um, at, S at STC, yeah, email right yep, there. STC <laughs> at pacer.org, and we can verify that you attended and email you the certificate. Well, we'll just wait another minute, see if there's any questions. Yeah. Otherwise, appreciate everyone joining us today. Yeah. We hope you learned something new. <laughs> oh, I hope Paul did an amazing job answering your questions, mm -hmm. and that's why we haven't had to field very many. <laughs> I bet he did. The recording will be available. It will be on YouTube. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, and it'll be on um, Pacer's YouTube channel. Yeah, Simon Simon Technology Center mm -hmm. is the name of the YouTube channel. Maybe not like immediate, immediate, but pretty nope. quick. It'll it's be immediate. immediate. <laughs> Paul's going to make it immediate. You can watch it right now. Oh, probably the microphone. <laughs>